So I've always juggled this concept of why after accepting a product, I tend to let it sit for a few days before even starting it. Is it laziness? Is it carelessness? Is it imposter syndrome? Am I just straight scamming? And the answer is neither of those. Procrastination I've come to terms with is an essential part of the creative process when done appropriately. The key word here is appropriately. The appropriate amount of procrastination is essential in the creative process. Now, some of you, however, might not actually call it procrastinating. You might say it's like a brief period. It's an intake time, research, studying, but at the end of the day, you didn't start it, right? So why? Why is that you work so hard to get the next client or you see the next task in Asana, or you just agree to help a friend with a project and you just can't seem to start it right away sometimes? Here, here's my take. If I were to set the client project that goes through an entire branding overhaul that I've done a number of times already, why is it that I still sometimes feel like I don't know what to do? I think it's because although the execution of designing is familiar, the actual process is not always the same. That's a, is that obvious? I think that's obvious. Sometimes you might need to give yourself time understanding what the actual brand is just in general, not even research. What tone do they even use on socials? Who do I feel like they're targeting? What I feel like they're targeting those people? How do I tweak what they're even currently doing tonally to match and align with my initial idea? on what it should look like, all valid questions. And the fact is they all come at the moment you and the client finally pull the trigger. So it's just all at once. And for the record, that's a lot to handle. And it's not easy to process it all that quickly all the time. So then you go through the stages of research. You gather likable, like-minded brand visuals and align them with your brain as cool ideas to try on your overall vision. That may include like Pinterest, Save It, Twitter, Instagram, or Behance, etc. Then even after collecting two to three pages of visual inspiration, you still have to ask yourself, well, which one of these am I gonna even try? Cause to me, I feel like this idea and then this idea could be something really cool. But then you can also throw in like this effect and then like this a color scheme and these designs, and then you realize it could be stretched further. And then of course you also consider well, my own style and time within design, it makes me think that, you know, it could look good with like this other idea in my head. And then without realizing it's been two days and you haven't even started yet. No pen to paper, no mouse to pixel or vector, just, you just, you just in the thought process. And then of course you ask yourself the question, does this make me a bad person? No. As a matter of fact, it makes you look like many other creatives that need the time to process the information that you get through your brief of your client or organization or your workplace. At least that's what you're doing, hopefully actively. That I can't defend if you're just like, there's just ignorance towards pushing the project over the starting line. I can't defend you there, but candidly that happens too right? Myself included. I've been in the past where like products were not even started, but there I am playing Valorant for six, seven hours that day. You know what I mean? But with that also comes the guilt when you hover back over to your emails, your socials, Twitter, etc., And you see the client message that you sent saying like, I cannot wait to get started. Yeah. It feels bad sometimes. So how do you avoid this? One thing is to give yourself a realistic breakdown of how your process goes when going through the client project motion. You also don't even need a real product. You can just do this before even having one. Mine kind of just goes a little bit something like this for an example. It starts at number one, go to the client website, socials, and get an understanding of how these people are, who these people are, not just the faces of the people that you spoke to, but read the comments. What's the usual takes and conversations like, and jot it all down Two, let's go through the actual visual inspiration sites and gather assets that successfully communicate similar feelings of what you're feeling that best aligns after going through those socials. Number three, come up with like three visual keywords that can describe the feeling the audience would get when actually viewing the website as a whole. Then, and take those keywords and break them down separately and define what it looks like visually for each. So for instance, if you have words or phrases such as like stark precision and energetic chaos, two very different looks, but they both maybe help tell your story. However, now when you actually have them separately, it's a lot more easier to define when actually exploring, which then ends up being the next phase of the exploration process or V1, designing the actual interpretation of those keywords, visual inspiration and personal design choices. Then number six on my list is meet the client and get a pulse of where the project should lean. And then lastly, evaluate that and continue. Now that's a lot to get through. It's not self-explanatory either as there's like a lot of thinking in between those steps, but what actually helps me is that it tells me to get started. I can tackle steps one through three and then be in a good spot to pick things up confidently the following day. Most of the time ignoring the task comes because you don't actually have a system on how to actually complete one. So you can start there. Allow me to preface this video with one thing though. If you actually end up setting yourself up with unrealistic timelines from the start with your client, then of course you have a lot of blame to take when they ask, you know, where the project is. I do want to say those who are in the process of engaging with the client and coming up with a project deadline, lead with procrastination process buffered in. If you think you can complete a project or a V1 in three days, 
Maybe it's best to actually give yourself a week to give yourself time to process ideas that also did not work. This isn't also just for client work either. It's company organization work as well, by the way. You tell me what's better, right? Telling the client that you, you know, that paid you for a creative project that the design will take, let's say like one week and it takes you two weeks and you didn't even start the first draft. I mean, that's crazy. Let's just say you started it, but you didn't finish it. Or that you actually suggest the product timeline will take one month with like multiple checkpoints to assure the client is of course in on the process, but more importantly, time to communicate on the direction being actually good. So you just give yourself time. Okay. It's, it's, it's literally that easy. I, I don't think I said I will complete something in like a week in like five years. And I guess what I'm, I'm, I'm good. No one's, no one's hating me for it. Okay. Now let me say this though, too. There are going to be products that you're going to have to finish in a couple days or an hour, but that's just like you being great and being awesome and being good and putting yourself forward and actually like a brand thing and just like the reliability, etc. But don't take that and allow people to like expose your time. You are the sole protector of your time and how you end up spending it. And if you spend it with a design like myself, I love it, but be sure you give yourself enough time to process your information. Procrastination is an essential part of the design process. So uh, yeah, next time you end up getting a client project, it add like a, a, you know, whatever it is, add another half of whatever the full time is. Or if it's one week, ask for two. And guess what? You're not gonna change anything with signs have a really, really solid direction and give yourself enough time and space to complete this thing. So with that, Sesso HQ out. You're not gonna keep smiling, stay positive, and stay freaking brother, guys. And just for the record, I, I, I enjoy the sit, sit down videos. I totally didn't have a video idea, so I wanted to do one of these, but if you guys like them, you let me know and I can do them more. So uh, yeah, peace.